And when they throw the street theater in and they, people come up to you and say, you know, like, we're going to get you or we're watching you. There's no place you can run, no place you can hide, you know, conform, blah, blah, blah. This is what happens. You realize you're in some sort of prison camp. And then you go, well, how come you didn't tell me about it? How come your friend didn't tell me about it? <clears throat> how come my friends didn't say anything? If everyone knows all this, how come they're not saying anything? Why aren't you saying anything? Why don't you tell me? The answer is because they're cowards. Everyone knows it, but they don't say because you're the lamb, you're the target, and they're not, and that's all they know, and they don't want to become the target, so they're going to keep their mouths shut. And, you know, better you than them. Yes, that's a despicable coward. And, you know, so you're surrounded with despicable cowards as friends. That's too bad for you, but, you know, the only real friend you have is Jesus Christ to get you through this. You know, we're all on our own here, and that's the only remedy. Because given the reality that I just said, in other words, no way out, total surveillance, <clears throat> total street theater, gas lighting, infiltration, um, you know, even messing with doctors, mechanics, you know, sabotage of vehicles, sabotage of your body if you go to the doctor, all those things globally, cosmically, coordinated perfectly. How? There is no way, and this is where the, this is why this show is the ultimate breakthrough, because this you will never hear anywhere else unless someone survives it and, and can talk. But I mean, the odds are you won't. So that, you know, I can just say take it or leave it with me. What it shows is, and when, the t see, the targeted individuals will never really figure this out. See, they will go to their group meetings, and I, I was on a, a TI page on Facebook for a while, and they just don't get it. They don't get it. And uh, even people like John Hall and Robert Duncan, they just don't really get it. They don't understand the vastness of it. They don't really understand the multidimensionality of it. And they're scientists. And they don't understand. And, you know, Hall is a Christian. I don't know about Duncan. I think they are both Christians, but they haven't had their eyes open. They haven't been through what I've been through. And they laughed at me, you know, when I said, eh, they're not bothering me, you know, because the voice to skull stuff, yeah. A voice of God, oh, yeah, a guy like me, they would love to hit me with a voice of God in my mind so that I would basically be their spokesperson for whatever kind of cockamamie thing they cook, cook up. I think a lot of these guys that, again, hold it before we get down that road. Again, all of it centers around Jesus. The entire gang stalking phenomenon. All these things I'm describing is the real, the real essence of reality on earth. It is, this is what's really going on while we do theater amongst each other, agreeing upon a, a reality that is just simply false. It's more like a virtual game where they're the ones in control messing with it. And, um, you know, they usually don't want to kill off people because, you know, they get their power from torturing people, not from killing people, not from people leaving the game. Okay, so all this is in place. And from the other dimensional standpoint, like I say, a virtual game where all these people are monitoring it and monitoring souls and they're being monitored too. It's almost an infinite loop, okay? It's like an infinite loop. But the fabric of your walls and your ceilings, and is, they're non-existent. They're right there looking at you, watching you through your walls, both literally and with a more advanced technology than the guy across the street, who basically, in the end, he apologized to me. We all came down to God. He said, your God is the right one. He was a Pakistani guy. You know, some elite mucky muck, head of the, of, he was like the drug czar of L.A., where he was uh, in charge of, I guess, pharmaceuticals coming in and out of L.A. or something, some government job appointed thing, you know, I mean, and then he was, and he was messing with me and running the show and, you know, creating a virtual reality, you know, Truman show out of it. Okay, fine. But in the end, he apologized, you know, before I, I had to move out because it got so bad that we couldn't even... You know, realize the infestation was the entire neighborhood. 
They're all coordinating it because nobody wants to say no because they don't want to be next. So, you know, in terms of whatever what they were trying to do with us, whatever, I guess we were their entertainment. But upon leaving, when, you know, the, uh, we sent everything off in a moving van, we were there one last night with no furniture, no blankets, no nothing. So he brought over blankets and pillows, his, him and his wife, and apologized, you know, just so we could get through the night, but knew it, knowing he kind of drove us off. And he tried to, he tried to put the, as he called it, the evil eye on the sale of our home so that we couldn't leave because he wanted us to stay there forever under his control or some such. Anyway, he said, your God is the right God. In his kind of Pakistani accent voice. Your God is the right God, you know, sort of thing. And, um, and basically apologized for everything he had done. You know, he looked like a deer in the headlights. And he goes, another thing, he just said, look, you don't have any idea how evil evil really is. You, the evil things people do, you know, like what he knows about, what scares him is so evil that he can't even describe it. And I'm like, you mean, and, when, and I made a joke, I said, you mean dismembering and torture of people uh, and having orgies over the whole thing? You mean that sort of evil? And he was silent, <laughs> right? <laughs> Believe me, that's nothing compared to hell. Compared to the hell these people who've rejected Christ will go through rejecting the Lamb. Because, see, not, nothing is pure except the Lamb is pure. And the only way you can get out of it is if someone else pays the crime for, for the crimes for you of humanity against humanity. The only one is Jesus. So he's at the center of this whole thing. Because what's the whole point of the gang stalkers? The criminals, criminal, um, you know, coalescence. What is the whole point of it? When you join up, you take an oath, right? And that oath is against God. I mean, that's basically it. You, you, whether you take the Cosa Nostra, um, you take the mafia, you take any of the criminal gangs, drug cartels, um, even PTA, you know, churches, whatever, you know, masons. You're, it's all about taking these oaths. But the thing that none of them discuss is this virtual reality board that they end up getting a knowledge of and they get on the other side of it. I mean, they're the perps now, and you're the victim, right? And they never tell you about it, and, and they should, but they don't. And that's a black mark against them, and Jesus will go, no, not go anywhere near them. Jesus will actually reject them so they can never get to the point of asking for help from the Lord. He'll actually make it so they never get to that point. It's so bad, folks. But anyway, so these layers of reality, of surveillance of weirdness like, you know, seeing through other dimensions and having, having street theater become illusory. In other words, hallucinations become street theater. They can produce hallucinations in your mind where you literally live in a world that you think is just like we have right now. We have a collective hallucination. We're living in a world we think is real. It seems consistent, but it's not. It's arbitrary. It's created by them. High technology, electricity, all this stuff, still, they're managing it all. Uh, high-end surveillance. Yes, they surveil all souls. They especially keep an eye on each other. There's nowhere that the, the perps can go. Do, forget about the TIs for a minute. There's nowhere that these perps can go where they're not watched and judged and analyzed. So they're not free. They have to do it to you because you're targeted. And the reason you're targeted is because you won't conform to this situation, and if you did, then you wouldn't be on your own free. They go, oh, I'm free now. Satan made me free. No, it means now you have to toe the line, meaning you have to do evil things to other people, crimes to other people. You have to live a lie, or you too, or you'll be whacked. So you agree to that, meaning the second death, Jesus goes nowhere near you, because you've shown that you have no courage to stand up for Christ anyway. You're never going to pick up your cross. and well, Jesus expects you to pick up your cross and go with him. To overcome this world means don't bow down to that. So uh, they know you won't do that. So he's going to stay away from you. And the punishment you're going to get, you're going to wish every day of your eternal punishment that you had just for one minute. Said, no, this is wrong and done the right thing. Everyone on earth knows about it. 
They all participate in it and targeted individuals are simply those who are outside of that realm and who could not describe what I've described, most of them, because they, they just see it with someone following them. This is the gang stalking extravaganza of the Zeph Daniel version. That's what you're hearing. But I'm explaining the, the multi-leveled nature of it so that you understand what you're up against. You cannot beat it with uh, support groups unless those are prayer groups. But uh, unless you're going to see it from... See, most of the people that are targeted individuals, their eyes are not open. They just can't believe that it could be that vast. That you could be, before you were conscious of it, you were surveilled and followed anyway. And then when you became conscious of it, you said, I'm a targeted individual. But you were already from cradle to grave. Everyone is surveilled in the same way just because you don't see the mechanism behind your walls, behind the, the fabric of this reality, which is quite thin. You don't see them all working there and following you and watching you. You don't see all that. So you think, okay, it doesn't exist. That's not true. It's a virtual game. Every single piece on the board, meaning every human being, is tracked because... And the ones who are the, what you call perps, these are all the more tracked than you. And the reason they're more tracked than you is because they can't afford for any of these people to blow the whistle. They have to discredit them. That, oh, he's a ranting, raving lunatic. Listen to him. There's nothing like that. You can't prove that. Now, I've had private discussions with people on the other side who verified to me every single thing over the years. I mean, it's taken years and years for me to compile enough data to know that I'm absolutely 100% precisely correct with no error whatsoever. Not a single error. Now, there are people that say they disagree with me. My friend, you're disagreeing because you can't believe what I already know. And when your eyes are open, you will then say I'm right. So there's no way that I can... You can counter me because I'm only describing what I have been through, what I have seen, what I know, and what I know to be true. And uh, believe me, I've, it's been a lifetime of dealing with this situation. All the other side will do, unless they're your friend, is they'll laugh and go, huh, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. But when they do, they say, yes, you do know. But I've had enough come forward. You know, people that want the Lord, so they come to me hoping that I can talk to the Lord on their behalf, that please tell the Lord not to, not to keep avoiding me. I really want redemption. And I said, okay, I'll go talk to the Lord on your behalf. Are you really ready to leave all that? You know, they're going to follow you, you know. They're going to all know the day that you choose the Lord, they're going to show up and they're going to start infiltrating your house and they're going to start moving stuff around. They're going to start, you know, saying boo on the street out of nowhere. They're going to sabotage your car. They're going to sabotage your life. They're going to try to put your sons and daughters into prostitution. I mean, they're going to do all that stuff. You really ready for that? And most of them will just say, you're right, I'm not ready. And they, and they go. And I'm like, well, but don't you understand that the protection you have now is false. They're only protecting you because you do the bidding of the beast, you know, of all the people that are surveilling you, and you're all aware of the whole thing, so you act accordingly, thinking you're going to win, but the whole point is your destruction. The whole point is that you have destroyed yourself. The whole point is that you're... The very thing that you fear in this life will be a thousand billion times worse on your head after death. You want to take your chances with that, you'd be wrong. You will suffer eternal damnation and the punishment will be for everything on humanity, not just your crimes. For everything everyone did on your head forever and ever, world without end, amen. And all will agree that that's perfect justice. That's why, again, Jesus is at the center of this whole thing. Part of, like, if you're smart enough to figure all this out, part of that intelligence of figuring it all out and then not flipping out, you know, not going nuts, right? Keeping your wits about you. Jesus it makes it all seem, um, you know, handleable because he'll say, yes, it's going on. Hearken unto me. Let me guide you. 
through this treacherous world and don't worry about it. And indeed, you know, when I would obediently follow him, I didn't need to worry about it. And the reason why is because a lot of this evil simply stopped. Now, we, we talked about tagging and all that. People get tagged generally when they're one of these perps, you know, that again knows the multidimensional reality of it, knows it's a virtual game, doing it anyway, knows ultimately it, it's a spiritual realm that's real, not this one. Knows where it's coming from. Super advanced high technology, it's way beyond our comprehension. Otherwise, they couldn't produce, they can produce people in your life where you think these people are there and then they're not, and then there'll be a historical record of them having been there, but they really weren't there. I mean, that's how far beyond our comprehension it is. A lot of these people can come and go in and out of the game. They can come and go in and outside this reality. They are multidimensional beings that come in and go out. You know, the whole thing is a virtual Truman Show. The Truman Show was done in a way to point out this reality in a way that wouldn't make the director, Peter Weir, seem like a nutcase. But Weir knows all about it. David Lynch certainly knows all about it. A lot of people know about it who are in the arts, but they can't directly just say it the way I am saying it because it, it, they will seem insane. So there's this hyperdimensional reality that is the real reality that envelops this one, which is the false reality, and they can then produce street theater, infiltration, following, and even manifestations of other worlds. Like you get off a plane and think you're uh, in Cleveland or something, but it's another, it's a virtual Cleveland, and it's only the next day that you're actually in Cleveland when you wake up in your hotel room what, you know, afraid to go outside because you're wondering what the heck's going on out there. The next day, everything's normal. And so you go, oh, it's normal again. Okay. And then you cope that way throughout your life. Oh, I get back to the workplace. Oh, they're not manifesting. Fine. I'm just going to go back to my life. No, no, no. What you saw was real. What they did was real. More real than this placid reality of everything's fine. If anything, the Lord just backs him off because he's not going to give you more than you can handle. Now that I know. And you overcoming this reality is what he wants. In other words, why were we born here? To overcome. Why were we born on earth in this virtual game show? To overcome. Why were we born here? To please him. It pleases him to have us here. So to see who will overcome and who won't. And it may not seem fair that we're kind of like put in here as gladiators, but that's basically what the deal is. Uh, you can be one of them. Those are called the dead. They are not alive. The people that will manifest a lot of them and, and you know, again, um, do their sabotage and do their horrible things. They are dead. They are twice dead and they may be walking around, but they are basically dead. They are not alive in the way you're alive. They are not they have no soul. They have no future. They have, they've given up. They died already and then they were allowed to keep on going to serve their beast. But, you know, it's basically like an animated puppet at that point, not an actual human being. Uh, many, much of the world has become that. When it gets to a certain extent, God just cleans up the mess with something like a Planet X or you know, Comet Elenin or whatever it is that's coming in, um, you know, that will disrupt the whole earth like the scenario in 2012, he'll just hit the reset button for that purpose, but he'll guide his own the whole way. It's a horror story. And again, if you're one of them and you're aging like the guy across the street with the microwave thing on, it, on his roof, so he's basically over there cooking us through our walls the whole time we lived there. And then why did I even decide to move there? You have to almost go into Rosemary's Baby to understand that one. To move there in the first place, where this guy is right across the street with all this gear, and then they're all in on it, you know, to have moved there in the first place was all part of the same game. Who put the decision in my head to say yes to have moving in this house where I moved into basically race with the devil? <laughs> I moved on to a movie set. How did all this occur? 
Now, what was it they wanted? Well, they will try to recruit you to play the game and become a perp like them. Or you can continue to be persecuted. That is, pick up your cross. In other words, the TI is the perfect lamb. He's the one who picks up his cross. And, and you need to follow Jesus, not follow your support group. Because what you're dealing with is beyond anything Duncan Hall and all these guys even ever talked about. It's, it's not just that they use a satellite on you. They have things far more powerful than the satellites. They manipulate this space-time plane to drive you nuts. And it, because a lot of the things, well, that's, they try to find a scientific explanation for it. It just gets to the point where there is none. There is none. It's not possible what you've seen. It's not possible what just happened. It's not possible what they just did to you and then all of a sudden they, no one has a memory of it. That is, it proves my point that it's a virtual game. And it's like the same bet with, with God and the devil had over Job. You know, we're in here like Job and the bet is I'll bet my people can overcome and I will lead my people out so long as they'll hearken unto me. But if they don't, you can have your way with them. And that's, that's the deal. You, want, you don't want to be a per... Believe me, do you want to do crimes against humanity and then be tried for it after death? No. You don't want to be on the side of the gang stalker. But the gang stalker is just basically the dead. They are the dead. They are Satan's army, the dead. These are souls that have been spoken for, so there's no eternal life due them. They are darkness. They are just an extension or a sock puppet of Satan's will upon the earth. They gave up a long time ago and died, but the corpse was able to be reanimated and kept in place to do the bidding of the one operating the sock puppet, and that's basically it. And they target those individuals. Let me ask you another question. I'll prove my point even further, Your Honor. How many targeted individuals know the deal? Five? Five percent? How about zero? Most don't know. Most do not know the levels of this. They think it's surveillance. They think it's a group of bad guys down the street. They think it was just a coincidence that they flew somewhere and it started in again. They don't have any idea that everything they do is mapped, followed, seen, like the being is right in the room with you. They have no idea what the real thing, deal is going on. They still think there's a scientific explanation. There is none. The kinds of theater that go on, the kinds of things that get produced are not possible in this time-space realm if you are an honest broker regarding the truth. And if you mention it to people, they will want to lock you up as nuts, even if they know you're telling the truth and you're freaked out by it. Oh my God, oh my God, they can see me. Oh my God, they're following me. Oh my God, they're in my car. They've, they've rigged the car. The, the tires fell off. The, there's nowhere safe. There's nowhere I can go. Help me, please. Oh, please help me. Yes? Isn't that what they know? And what happens to people that talk like that? I know they're scared and, it's, and, and they're frightened and it's horrible when, they're, when they start seeing this stuff happening. But w w what happens to them? All right, they go to the psychiatrist. They go into therapy. What happens then? They get put on medication. What happens then? They, they work on them. Um, they, they can be used too. Even if they're not in on the inside cool crowd, they didn't become cool. Like you could be like Neil Young and be cool, baby. Poor Neil Young. What a sad, sad case he is. But he, he got fame and fortune. So I guess he got something on his way out. Too bad so many people had to die, Neil. Yeah, and you really talk about the poor and you really want to help people. But Neil, you and I know who owns your ass. And we know that basically your entire raison d'etre is to hurt other people in the way I'm describing, though you come off like a saint caring about the poor and voicing your outrage over the evil Republicans or whatever it is. But we all know what's really going on, Neil. I mentioned him because in his lyrics, 
in earlier music, he, he alludes to some of this and um, is very proud of his position of being a sellout. So I, I, I just wonder if anyone will ever confront Neil Young or the Beatles or anybody else or Bob Dylan or anybody else about their position and their untenable position and their position of idiocy, of, of foolishness, of not, you know, and they go, well, we're real. Oh, you're real about the fact that you're not real. That's the only thing you're real about. So that's just an aside for those who understand what's going on. I, I don't have time to explain all that, but you know, I've had a long battle with the people of rock and roll. We're trying to get them to understand that they sold their souls, but you know, how can you do that when the guys making movies about sell your soul for rock and roll and they're big time Christians, they too are sold out. I mean, what do you do then? Now, that's true too. Read between the lines on that one. Oh, how could you say that? I know pastors that you know who are um, not come clean on this issue. Okay? Not living a really honest life because they're scared and they don't want this thing to attack them or their family so they're not really going to go all the way and, they, and they, they're afraid of being around me because they don't want to get to that level. They don't want to... They don't want to be inflicted that kind of pain from even associating with one of you, one of me, whatever. They, they are scared to death. And so they ask us, please conform with us. You can be like super Christian. There's like only about 25% you don't talk about, but then we can all be together, you see, and have baptisms and communion. And it would be just a lovely time, wouldn't it? Well, how's that any different than the churches that basically are gang stalkers? How's that any different... You know, I had a vision, and I wrote it in a novel called The Great Fear, and I never finished the novel, but you know what? I should get the thing out and put an ending on it and put it out there. So why not? You'd love it. It's time travel. It's the French Revolution. It's Jesus shows up to a bunch of his followers in France in the field, like Sermon on the Mount, pulls out an AK-47, mows them all down during the time of the French Revolution. Yeah, and I always wondered, why did Jesus just take an AK-47 and mow down the whole congregation? And I asked Trish this when I wrote it. I said, Trish, I don't know. This is when I first met you, like 1992. Yeah, it's an unreleased novel. I'm sure you'd like to read it. <laughs> it's pretty out there. But, you know, you know, I don't expect ever, at any time, forever, for any reason, anyone would ever want any um, novels, music, anything that I would produce is in a black hole, not allowed to be talked about or listened to or looked at in any way, shape, or form, regardless of what the merits. I mean, I see most people in the bestseller list can't even write their name. So, you know, whether it's good or bad, that's irrelevant. The point is, it's not to be touched. Unless what? Unless I crossed a certain line. But if I did that, then I'd be cut off Two, knowing what I know about the Lord and the truth and redemption and the goodness of God and the goodness of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord, knowing what I know about that, that this is all about him. It's all about the Lord. It's all about he's doing it. I have to go to him to figure out even why I was born. And he comforts me and tells me, you know, it's because I wanted it to be that way and shows me some things and shows me how I can live through this whole thing and live good and be happy. And I have been happy. Yeah, I've been miserable too, but I've been happy a lot more than uh, a lot of people I know who are on the other side. And they say, well, there is no other side. We're all one. Of course, you're programmed to say that because if you say anything else, you'll be punished. But if you don't take your punishment, you're going to be punished eternally with the second death. And I'm here to warn about that. You people listening in who sit judging me, and how dare I speak about such things? You need to look at your own souls. Instead of looking at me, you need to look at yourself in the mirror and say, do I really want to pay the price of eternal punishment when I die? Do I really want that? No matter how many things you've done or how many people you've caused to die by, by playing the game. Yeah, people die and it's on your head. That can all be erased because the Lamb paid for it all. He paid for you and me. 
You don't have to stay on that side. He can, he's powerful. He can make it so that all that surveillance and all that stuff just goes away and they become blinded. And you, he'll make, as it says in Psalm 23, uh, a table for you in the midst of your enemy. And I, I just feel a need to read Psalm 23 because, you know, it describes this situation that I'm describing perfectly. Again, targeted individual... They want to find a scientific explanation and they think they got it all down. Okay, I'm getting voice to skull. Okay, I'm getting surveillance. Okay, they're doing street theater. They're gaslighting me. They're breaking in and moving stuff around. They're putting little cameras around. They're doing all this stuff. You wonder, you know, they're popping up and trying to torture and scare me. They're sabotaging things and working for my demise. I should be scared to death, hiding under a rock and unable to live. Exactly. But the idea that it's all man-made coordinated is false, completely false. The idea that there's a scientific explanation just because they use some satellites, they use some microwaves, some infrared, they use some uh, high-end cameras, they, they use surveillance, that you think that's, it's, there's architecture, wires, and, 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 and people, and intention. No, there's like a room somewhere where they all meet and decide they're going to go after you. No! Because the next day it goes away and then it's back again in a supernatural manner that you cannot explain with science. You really want to pay? eternal? Listen, not only eternal punishment, but your children will also be cursed after you're gone. And their children, and their children, and their children, and if, if it goes on that long, will all be cursed with death. Don't you want to be the one who helps to redeem your own family, both past, present, and future? Don't you want to be the one that steps up to the plate and does the right thing for once? It's not about me. You know, let this little spectacle today be, you know, half the show was uh, erased. <laughs> you know, erased when I was describing the, the uh, in great detail, the, the kind of, uh, amazing theatrical things that would happen and the worlds that I was privy to look into and having other witnesses see the same thing and go, yep, it's real, quit fighting it. That's what they would say. It's, look, it's real, that's there, the clown face, all that, I saw the same thing. Quit fighting it, you can't win. Look at, look at the power involved. I pray in Jesus' name to deliver me. Thank you, Father. You see what I mean? And then, yes... Hard to find a Christian who actually will even get to the point. I mean, I had one guy in L.A. when I first came on the uh, web and I had gone to a place called the World Wide Web Store to get my website. And there was a guy that worked there. He was going to the Calvary Chapel, which was, you know, a cesspool of, uh, of total evil and totally owned by Satan, 100%, lock, stock, and barrel. And... Um, no, you, nothing is overt about it that looks wrong. And the Blue Letter Bible, you know, was commissioned by Chuck Smith and others. It, no, it's not. It's that it's part of the fabric of this network of the unreality of our situation. And it's basically the goal is to conform those, you know, conform people to this virtual reality system and then tell them it's Jesus that's protecting them, not Satan, and it's all twisted backwards, while they, the honchos, do all kinds of evil things in the background. It's, it's really unbelievable, but it's no different from, say, what you've heard about, you know, the pedophilia in the Catholic Church or other, you know, little things leak out. But if you want to know more about that sort of thing, read my book, Lamb. You can see it in great detail. Another book that's like, it's like when Bryce Taylor came out with her book, Sue Ford of uh, Thanks for the Memories, just doing a diary of her uh, experience in L.A. with all these elites and, and how they're connected with porno and human sacrifice and secret societies and that there's nobody, no celebrity, no one of them is, is, is um, clear. They're all perps, every single one. Ronald Reagan and Bob Hope and uh, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. And it goes on and on and on and on about how all these people are connected, the L.A. Dodgers, the, 
the USC School of Dentistry, connections there. And from the perspective of this girl that was sold into slavery to be used as a child prostitute for pedophilia amongst them when she was five, six, seven, eight years old. Uh, it, 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 you know, Henry Kissinger, and that she was a personal computer programmed by Kissinger to be like a courier with data to be uploaded and downloaded as a human, uh, as a human uh, machine. And she recounts this whole thing in this book that should be the greatest groundbreaking book of all time. And eventually she has to pull the book off the market and go hide, which is what she did, because she, didn't, she wanted to be left alone. In other words, she kind of walked it back because she saw the whole thing was blacked out, no one would touch it, no news article, nobody. When it should have been on Oprah, right? It should have been Geraldo looking into it. It should have been the whole treatment because she was completely, ver you know, had veracity in her testimony. She had no reason to lie and she didn't make any money or anything. But her handlers who were around, handling her, watching her, they posed as her helpers. That freaked her out. So she retreated. How could a book like this retreat when you're dealing with the biggest icons in the entertainment industry and politics? You're dealing with the biggest people, virtually the biggest people. Anyway, the reason I know something about that is because the society she describes is the one I grew up in. So I could verify and corroborate. I tried to get to her to have an interview, and they, there's a million people blocking that from ever happening. Because I could corroborate all of it and even add some more and get an interview with her that would... Uh, even go deeper and further. But, you know, there's also the hidden stuff. The stuff she didn't write about. The UFO connection. The high-tech connection. The Caltech connection. The fact that there's another world the humans are involved in, interdimensionally, spaceships, all that stuff, that's all going on. So, you see, the whole thing ended up being stopped because she wanted to live. And had she kept pushing it, she would have been another insect 